Welcome back to the comment section. I'm Brett Cooper. We are talking about superheroes yet again, which means that I put together this story and then immediately went to Scheller and said, is this DC? Is this Marvel? Who are these people? I actually did know the person we're talking about, but the universe, obviously, you guys know. I'm clueless, but I'm passionate. Before I get into it, make sure that you like this video, subscribe to this channel if you have not already, and ring that notification bell so that you never miss a comment section or off the clock episode. We are talking about Zachary Levi. He is Shazam for DC, and he posted something quite controversial on Twitter earlier this week. Now, for context, Shazam 2 is about to come out on March 17th, so Zachary Levi and the whole cast, they are about to be under the spotlight, doing a press tour, being asked questions. And so this really is not the best time for this to be happening for good old Zachary. However, I always admire people being unashamed in saying what they believe. Now, this all started because Lyndon Wood posted a tweet on January 28th and he said, do you agree or not that Pfizer is a real danger to the world? Zachary quote tweeted that and said, hardcore agree. <gasps> yeah. Oh my god, he's going against the mainstream narrative. Holy crap, he has his own opinions about something. The people lost their damn minds. Somebody replied and said, so you've decided to tweet this. Here's why you shouldn't have. That basically sums up what everybody thought about this. I mean, they were ripping him apart. It was less like you're a danger to society, but it was like, why did you have to do this before Shazam? Like, we wanted to like you, keep those opinions to yourself. Like, I genuinely think these people care less about you having these opinions and more about you publicizing them to the outside world. They just don't want to hear it. They don't want to know that you have these opinions. They want to live in ignorance, basically. So if you're just lounging around your house in your pajamas, keeping it all to yourself, that's totally fine. Actually, if you are lounging around your house, you need pajama gram. And guys, if you have no idea what to get your wife or girlfriend for Valentine's Day, you need to check out the natural nude pajamas from Pajamagram. I have been wearing these for months now. They are so comfortable. I had no idea what I was getting into because I have not really been a pajama person in the past. I literally made an entire video about that around Christmas time. And then they sent me these. They are incredible. And if you know women, we like soft things. These are soft. Your girlfriend will love them. But you need to order today because last year they sold out before Valentine's Day. They are obscenely popular. So order today and save 25% off with code NUDE. Pajama Grand will even wrap the whole gift for free. And if you missed out on their Christmas offer, don't make the same mistake twice. Like genuinely, she will love this. She will appreciate it. Even if it's not for Valentine's Day, maybe it's just something to make that time of the month a little easier. This will be a loved gift. So go to pajamagram.com right now and use code NUDE to save 25% off your naturally nude pajamas. That is pajamagram.com code nude. And of course, after you place that order, don't forget to tell them I sent you in that post order survey. I genuinely wish I was wearing these right now because it would make reading these absolutely obtuse comments much more fun. Somebody else replied and said, <clears throat> this is an extremely disappointing stance for you to take. And I hope you eventually understand why and learn from this. Yeah, I'm sure Zachary Levi, who is incredibly wealthy and incredibly successful and secure in himself, is going to care a lot about what you, Big Fudge, has to say. Another person said, first DC movie released direct to Fox Nation. He's literally not even saying anything about his political beliefs. It is ridiculous to me that people's personal medical decisions have become utterly politicized. And he wasn't even talking about this jab or anything like that. He was simply talking about Pfizer and objectively on paper, they don't have the greatest track record. Big Pharma on paper does not have the greatest track record. But it's a fact. He's not saying anything political, but people are automatically thinking that he is the worst human being alive, must be a Republican, all of this stuff. Now, this is the top comment under his tweet from some guy named Max. He says, <clears throat> For your own sake, please call Mark Ruffalo and beg him to help you understand how celebrities can be outspoken critics of corporate America, big pharma, and even Pfizer specifically without playing into anti-vax propaganda. I mean, honestly, the condescending tone in that reply is nauseating. It, that is so arrogant. Like, go check yourself. Mm, I'm so sorry. He literally posted two words and suddenly you think this is anti-vax propaganda. Do you want him to go on some press tour and be like, well, I'm not talking about this one because, you know, COVID is this. I'm only talking. No, that, mm, it's bullshit. Somebody else said, I'd rather take gun safety advice from Alec Baldwin than hear Mark Ruffalo's opinion on anything. <laughs> oh, God. Another person said, so he's supposed to call someone on an approved list for advice before voicing his opinion? If they can help it, yes. 100%. That is what people want. I mean, that is why PR teams are paid so much money, not only just for damage control, but to 
you know, control these celebrities so they do not challenge groupthink and waste the millions, maybe billions of dollars that these huge Hollywood studios have invested in them. You're afraid of a PR problem? Because God forbid they have an opinion unlike somebody else. Somebody else said Chuck was good, but not good enough for you to be doing all of this. Chuck is what he is kind of like known for outside of Shazam, first TV show. Somebody replied and said, questioning Big Pharma, which was totally fine five years ago, but not okay because Fauci said it was a no-no. Another person said, ever since I saw him sitting on a talk show talking about God this, God that, he lost me. That's so sad. Imagine somebody having religious beliefs or a strong set of values and that being so offensive to you, I mean, it kind of is not shocking because I don't think any of those people have any idea of what that entails or understand having any principles. Somebody else replied and said, this isn't new for him. He once called Jordan Peterson a deep thinker. I think he's a lost cause. The fact that they take sweet Jordan Peterson, the kindest man who all he wants to do is empower young men and, you know, make people think for themselves and, and be brave and be incredible and break the status quo. The sweet man. They make him out to be literally a villain. And if you follow him, you are a dangerous human being. This is the clip that they are discussing. I think one of the deepest thinkers that I've ever heard break down like human behavior uh, and... I don't know, just an understanding of all that stuff and, and I think good good wisdom along with it is Jordan Peterson. I think that he would be a person that I would trust. I think that guy has a lot of integrity. That's literally it. He has a good understanding of human behavior. He has a lot of integrity. Now, the fact that he's on Joe Rogan is probably not helping his cause because Joe Rogan is another one of those people that if you listen to him, it's like, oh my God, you're one of them, aren't you? While they were also pulling up these old clips, they were going through... Zachary Levi's Twitter follows and being like, look, he follows Rogan. Look, he follows Peterson. Oh my God, he follows this right wing person too. Oh my God, he follows Peter McCullough. You fool! The amount of time that you have to spend digging through somebody's follows. On Twitter, you can't search that like you can on Instagram. You just spent all of this time and energy trying to expose somebody because you are so angry that they think differently than you. Like, that must be just such a sad life to sit around thinking that you are a victim and that every single person is out to get you. Newsflash, they're not. Nobody cares. Nothing on the outside, nothing on the inside. You are spending way too much time digging rather than trying to build a productive, happy, fulfilling life for yourself. Like, that is going to be your fault if you are unhappy in 50 years, sitting behind your little screen with your anime profile picture. Now, I was sure that DC was going to like lay down the hammer and have him delete the tweet or put out a statement, apologize, or he was just going to delete it on his own volition. But neither of that happened. In fact, he sort of doubled down. He posted this a day later. He said, just one example of what I'm referring to, dot, dot, dot. Again, none of this is aggressive, stoking anger or fear. Literally, the emojis he's using, it is all sad simple concern is what I would say. I'm the emotion that's being evoked here. And then he adds a link to the 2009 lawsuit with Pfizer, where they had to pay the largest healthcare settlement in US history for fraudulent marketing. That was $2.3 billion for fraudulent marketing, for lying to consumers, largest settlement. Like that is kind of a big deal. Somebody replied and said, Zachary Levi is what happens when you tell incurious men that all they need to do in life is read Jordan Peterson and listen to Joe Rogan to be fully informed about the world. You bring up a lawsuit over a decade old to discredit thousands of people's work for a life-saving vaccine. I'm sorry, the largest settlement in healthcare history is still a big freaking deal even a decade later. Especially because, you know, Pfizer's methods seem to be kind of unchanged you know if you catch my drift like it is not new information that big pharma lies to us that they make more money when we rely on them when we are unhealthy but it is simply not in vogue to say that right now because daddy government told everybody otherwise and told everybody that we need to blindly believe them that's the only reason why these people are freaking out somebody replied and said nobody is getting the vaccine anymore in the u.s or europe because it doesn't work get over it stop whining that was one of like three responses to that person another rationally minded person tweeted this and said this whole zachary levi shit is so stupid because nothing he said even remotely implies he's anti-vax all he did was call out pfizer for their objectively corrupt business decisions and the people berating him for it under the post of his literal father's death are actual scum now read the end of this 
And the people berating him for it under the post of his literal father's death are actual scum. I read this and I thought, okay, well, maybe they're spamming old posts because that's what these people do. They will go through all of your archives. They will make it known that they hate you. They hate every aspect of you. But no, his father passed away amidst all of this in the last five days. And this is what he posted. He said, Papa D, many of you have been asking for an update on my dad, Daryl, though he fought valiantly until the end. My pop passed away peacefully a few days ago, surrounded by friends and family. Watching anyone slowly die of cancer is one of the worst experiences I can attest to. But knowing that he is no longer trapped in his decaying body and is now singing karaoke in heaven gives me so much peace and joy. And knowing how many of you were continuously sending him love and thoughts and prayers gives me even more faith in humanity. Know that he felt and appreciated it all, as did our whole family. Thank you for your overwhelming kindness through such a difficult time. Sending you all endless love and light right back. He posted this after his controversial Big Pharma posts. This happened after. And there were many, you know, loving and empathetic comments from fans and friends and family. But there was also this. Maybe the spooky, scary Pfizer got him. So don't be an anti-vaxxer. How about you stop spreading vaccine misinformation, you entitled simple-minded actor? Totally lost any respect I had for you, which granted wasn't very much to begin with. No one cares for you, you Trump-supporting anti-vaxxer. I mean, like that commenter said, scum of the earth. One track mind, totally lacking all human empathy. He said nothing about politics. I do not care what his politics are. He has a right to question things. He has a right to think critically about his own medical decisions. He has a right to think critically about objectively bad things that a company has done in the past. That is not a crime. And the moment somebody says something that goes against these people's brainwashed groupthink, they lose all ounce of humanity, which... At this point, I don't know how much they actually have left, but it's disgusting that you cannot see beyond your own polarized viewpoints. That's just sad. You cannot even connect with anybody on a human level. Now, that is not the end of the story, even though that would arguably be a powerful way to end this episode, because like I said earlier, Shazam 2 is about to come out. So obviously people were tweeting at James Gunn and the, you know, DC exec saying like, what are you going to do about him? What are you well, like? You're going to take him down. Are you going to, you know, remove him? Or are you going to speak out about it? But this dangerous misinformation. But this is what James Gunn had to say. James Gunn on Zachary Levi's recent controversial tweet. I can't be changing my plans all the time because an actor says something I don't agree with. Actors and filmmakers that I work with are going to say things that I agree with and things that I don't agree with. And he just left it at that. Now, in reading that out loud, it almost feels like he's exhausted by this and it's like, stop tweeting at me. I can't do anything about this. If I, you know, take him out of this film or cancel the film, I'm going to lose billions of dollars. So that's not going to happen. But I do like the response because that is how it should be. It should not matter. <laughs> like if you're employees think differently than you if they are still showing up and doing the work that should be the only thing that matters and i can't help but think that this is a very calculated response though because the movie is about to come out like they can't lose more money and he and dc have already been defending ezra miller for months like a man who has been accused of child trafficking and theft and battery they are already in hot water because of that like they are currently in the process of doing like a whole overhaul of DC, they're rebooting it, they've fired a bunch of people, they've canceled multiple films, they're just trying to get this film out, they wanna you know, wash their hands of this, move on. I doubt that Zachary Levi will be brought back after this, not just because of this comment, but because they're literally getting rid of everyone, except Ezra Miller at this point, which is just very, very weird. I mean, like if they keep Ezra Miller, but then fire Zachary Levi over this, that should absolutely tell you the state of the world right now and the values and priorities of these people. It's absurd. It's just all incredibly hypocritical, but I'm very glad to see somebody who is in the very public sphere, who has a lot of influence, being strong in their values. Like, it's shocking to me that I have to say, hey, good for you for having an opinion of your own, but that's kind of where we are at this point. And it is also incredibly impressive to me that he did not apologize. He did not delete the tweet because in America, you are allowed to talk about your different opinions. You are allowed to question things. We need to remember that. If not, things are, <laughs> things will go to hell basically. Okay, that was fun. And those people are crazy. If you want to see more videos like that, make sure you subscribe to this channel and like that video. And if you want even more content, you can follow me on Instagram at I'm Brett Cooper.